Hello, I'm Trish Karn. I'm the proprietor of Compositions by Karn, which started back in 1983 and is still going. My bo most difficult business decisions have actually been when I was employed rather than I, when I was self-employed. And I think the reason for that is that when I'm self-employed, I'm in control. At one point, I started a new job. I was living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the job was in Iowa City, Iowa. So rather than flying me out or asking me to drive out, which was about 13 hours driving, they did a telephone interview. And I didn't have a good feel for the person who was employing me. It's hard to get a good impression over the phone. He had my CV, but I only had his conversation. The job was the browsing room librarian. The day I arrived and started work, my boss informed me that he thought I really needed to fire the person who was my assistant in the browsing room because after all, she was pregnant out of wedlock. And I looked at him and I said, we'll see what the situation is. Trying to describe what my boss was like is very difficult. He was very uptight. His religion was a very strict religion in a way that mine was much more looking at people as people and finding that of God in them rather than making a judgment. He wasn't happy about my refusing to do it because he didn't work with her. He didn't have any reason to say she wasn't doing the job. So I started working in the browsing room and got on very well with Alana, who was my assistant. It was a good working relationship, and I was very glad I'd kept her because she did know the ins and the outs of the systems in the browsing room, which nobody else in the library knew. And I knew she was doing the job. She was a hard worker. In fact, she worked until she decided to leave uh, just before she gave birth. I wasn't going to fire her because she was doing a good job. He didn't really have a leg to stand on because there was no nothing that she had signed that I was aware of that said she wouldn't get pregnant out of wedlock. So I'd been foolish to get rid of her, but I also wasn't about to get rid of somebody for what somebody else felt was a lack of moral judgment. I wasn't in the uh, realm of making that kind of judgments of people. I just couldn't see any basis for firing her, so I didn't. Yes, after being in the browsing room for two or three years, I wanted to move to something slightly more challenging. Public library was all fun, and I was paid to read books because I was supposed to know what was in them and be able to advise people. But really, I needed something more challenging, and I had been working in the government documents department at the University of Pittsburgh and loved it. Having been there for a couple of years, I managed to get a change in department to work in government documents and was very pleased to do it. There was another uh, librarian in the reference section named Mary and somebody in the periodical section named Ruth. Then the one gentleman who'd been hired at the same time as we were. We'd all started at the beginning of the academic year, two years before this. But Mary and I had both worked in libraries before going to library school and had both graduated with master's degrees, as had he. But he hadn't any experience, really. And the only thing he had going for him was being a man, because the university was part of the state government, and the state government published all salaries. Mary and I were nosy. <laughs> so when we went to look at these salaries, we discovered that we were being paid less as women than the one gentleman who'd been hired at the same time as we were. We both felt that we had good rights to be given the same salary as he was being given and that we were worth it. So having gone to the bother of looking up the salaries and discovering that he'd been on higher income for two years than we had, we both got cross and uh, thought, no, we were worth just as much. We took the state to court and Ruth had decided not to go in with us because she had uh, three small children and her husband was also employed by the university and she felt it might affect his job as well. I don't remember how we filed it. I think we probably went to a local solicitor, but it was a case of making a complaint to the state government about unequal pay. And there was an equal pay commission. I think it had just never been raised. We both had husbands, in my case, my husband was a student at the university and he was getting free tuition. But as I remember, the gentleman 
His wife was also, in, you know, at the university as a student, and we won. There wasn't any reaction from my boss that I'm aware of, but then I left because of uh, Peter's birth, and so I wasn't there to see any fallout. In essence, it didn't do anything for me, but hopefully did something for people coming after me. Mary continued working there, but Mary never told me about anything having happened to her, which is reassuring in a when I worked for the OU, I had been very upfront at the interview that when a librarian's position became open, I would apply for it. But something in general reference or that sort of thing, I would have been quite qualified to do. I had a master's to honors level in library science from the University of Pittsburgh. And most librarians in the UK uh, only have a bachelor's degree. But when I applied for the librarian's position, I was told point blank in the interview that I would not get the position because I was not a chartered librarian. Now, as far as I could ascertain, being a chartered librarian only was proving your credentials and then paying money to become chartered. So when they told me that I couldn't get the job without being chartered, I gave notice after a short time and left. I think the feelings of Fairness and looking at people as individuals comes from my parents and also from my Quaker faith. If I'd knuckled under her with Alana, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself because as a woman, I felt that women had a right to be as they were. And if you got caught by being pregnant out of wedlock and didn't feel you wanted to have an abortion, you shouldn't have been forced into it. And society had no more right to judge you. You had to live with yourself. And the same with the equal pay. It just isn't right to be paid differently just because you're a man. When you're doing the same work as the woman, it was just down to fairness and to living life the way you should. You pay equal pay for equal work. It wouldn't have been realistic to make the children suffer because I wanted to have prestige. Prestige isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's pennies in the pocket that actually matter in the end when you're supporting a family. And you do the job, whatever it is, as well as you can do it, to make yourself proud of being able to do it well.